Hi there and welcome back to the channel. So, I've got my Flying V back out and uh, this thing has confounded me and caused me all kinds of problems. Not really, I mean, learning how to work on guitars by having, you know, things like this in my life, you know, building this guitar. Got another parts caster, uh, it's a, well it's actually a parts caster, this is a Flying V. Um, that one uh, is great and it's perfect and i sort of begun to play blues on it, started tuning it down to E flat and really enjoying that. This one, uh, I want to try it on this one because uh, the main thing I'm encountering with this guitar is it was a kick guitar and I set the neck and I made lots of mistakes myself. Uh, mainly it was my, my errors but um, I think that there was you know something not quite right about it. I noticed the company doesn't even sell it anymore um, so uh, I think that when I set the neck uh, it you know wasn't correct which caused this sort of ski jump effect you know at these at the lower frets now luckily I play with pretty high action I got into that on the strap got addicted to the sound of it and you know the feel of it like the way you really come down on the strings and uh, I and it only works on a strap for me like there's certain things about playing on a Stratocaster that I is completely changed my awareness of music and how I play and all that um, but I really like Flying V's, and I like the that I built it, and I like that I keep improving it, and I like the way they look on stage and things like that. And I, what I like to have is one guitar that's single coil for all the new stuff that I'm playing, because everything I'm writing now is like strat based, and uh, that's where my passion is. But I have another record before this one, and then all the material with my band East Orange that we've played over the years. I mainly played humbucker guitars back then, so it's like a lot of big like Pete Towns and stuff like. That kind of thing, you know, with a big humbucker. And I had the Pete, uh, Pete Townsend Schechter Telly with the dual humbuckers. You can see that on my channel, that guitar. Uh, so I need um, a guitar to cover that stuff. And I like to have, you know, a variation of guitars. And I really like the way these pickups sound. Goodell pickups. And they were wound by a guy in North Carolina who had a, had a really thriving company called Goodell. I don't know what happened. Um, it's over with. Uh, I can't find it anywhere. And uh, they went out of biz business at some point. He went out of business. But these pickups are PAF wound. They come in at like, you know, right at 7K. I can't remember what the numbers are. But man, they are really sweet, really rich sounding. I, uh, I like them a lot. I mean, they're like really good. I should keep adjusting them to get them even sweeter because uh, I can adjust for days like that. But uh, right now they are sounding really good and uh, they're the perfect fit for this guitar so it just got me excited about the guitar again and then uh, I took the I tried to remove the neck the neck is remo is uh, uh, in there with hide glue and I did that so that I would have the capability to remove the neck and you can see the marks where I've tried to remove the neck and I tried to use a hot knife you know some of the the, uh, the uh, ways that furniture makers French furniture furniture makers would remove high glue from their furniture using a hot knife and you know, on the seams. And so I ran one down here in the back and I could I could break up the, the high glue that was on the back, but I couldn't get to the sides here. And I, you know, damaged the guitar a little. It doesn't matter, this thing is like a I don't care at this point. I really actually like it getting beat up. And I will eventually get this neck off and see if there's anything I can do. Uh, one of the things that could be done is a, a, a slight sanding of the neck pocket or the neck itself, you know, like sand the neck so that it drops down and this kind of pops up at an angle. More than likely because of my V obsessions, I'm going to end up with a Gibson uh, Flying V at some point, uh, probably a cheap one, lower end one, um, just to have. Uh, so I'll probably just keep this one around and probably will never take the neck off. But if I could get the neck off and if I knew what I was doing, uh, potentially I could get rid of this kind of ski jump thing. But in lieu of that, because I just want to get the guitar running and I couldn't get the neck off, blah, blah, blah. And even if I get the neck off, I don't really know what I'm doing and I'll probably screw something else up. So I just decided, hey, why don't we just rock this thing the way it is? And one of the ideas I had, uh, besides using lower gauge strings, because I usually like to use 1152 on a Strat. Uh, here it's a little too, it's like so stiff down here. And like I said, I don't mind high action, but this is like really stiff. And I tried, Mark was thinking about playing it, and he, he was like, oh man, this is just, you know, too much. You have to jump, you know, it's like, just the action's nuts. So, I uh, took the truss rod cover off, back, uh, put the neck back to like, 
I think I, I tightened it all the way up, you know, just where it was completely flat. Cranked it all the way to the right and really just, you know, cranked it down. And then I, I dropped this tom bridge down as far as I could, stop piece. I had tried uh, the top wrap thing, but for whatever reason the guitar didn't like it, so I didn't do top wrap. But I used a NYXL, which is my favorite string brand. I usually use 1152, like I said. This one was a uh, 11s on the top, 10s on the lighter strings. So these are like 10s, 10 gauge, and so, so on. And then uh, up here, it gets heavier all the way up to 52. Or maybe it's 48, I forgot. I think it's, yeah, I think it is the, the 52 all the way at the top on the low on the low strings. So that helped, you know, loosen up these a little bit. I think a 10 gauge would work well. I just like the tone of the, the heavier strings, so kind of addicted to that too. So maybe this can just be my torture guitar and I'll work on playing better with this thing. I probably won't play many leads on this thing anyway. Most of the time I'm gonna be doing this kind of thing in my band because our guitar player covers all the lead stuff. I'm really more of a rhythm guitar player. I use the guitar to write songs, but I am really getting more into it and I want to be a better player. I'll never be great, but I want to be better than I am now. And the more riffs and knowledge you know and idioms you know, musical idioms, the more you can write, better you can write. So with all that being said, I think I got it better than it was. And it's in standard tuning right now, concert tuning. So I'll just play it for you. Let me just check the tuning real quick and make sure. And then I'll show you, in case you don't know, because I was looking up on a forum about this, I was looking everywhere for tuning down your flying V and see if anybody plays blues on their flying V, which you would think they were, because would, because uh, Albert King did it. I don't know if he tuned down or not, but I bet he did, because Stevie Ray Vaughan tunes down, tunes down, and he was a disciple of Albert King, so I would think he'd follow most everything he did, except for playing a flying V. Jimmy, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan looked like he was pretty much Stratocaster only. I know Jimi Hendrix was too, and that was the other thing that inspired me, is Jimmy and his, and his black V. He ended up giving that V away, so I don't know if he kept playing the V, and honestly, I don't like it when he plays the V as much. Uh, he plays it in Maui, in the Maui concert, and it's just weird. It's like he plays it, like, he plays it mellow, instead of like the way he plays a strap, uh, which it is more mellow. It has this delivery, you know, the humbucker delivery, uh, the PAF humbucker delivery is a beautiful tone, but it's not anything like a strat. So, this is going to be interesting. So anyway, let's just listen to the guitar in, in concert and standard toning, just to give you an awareness of how good this thing is sounding now, how much I like it, and then let's see what happens when you tune down to E-flat and see if I can get some of that Strat satisfaction, or at least, you know, because Billy Gibbons plays, Gibbon, uh, plays Gibsons for all his blues type stuff, and uh, it has a different sound. It's like, you know, kind of a Neil Young, like, blown out tone. It, it's got its own magic. I probably don't like it as much because I really miss the bounce of the 25 and a half scale length uh, uh, that you get from the Strat. Um, and I think that's the secret to why blues work so well on a Strat and lead guitar playing in general. Like, you know, a lot of lead guitar players play Strats because there's a reason. It's the way the neck feels, the scale length. I think scale length is like the main reason. All right, so here we go. Let's just see what this guitar sounds like. I'll put my little kill switch on so we don't make a bunch of noise until we're ready. So that's really cool. The kill switch, just hold it down. It's one of these intermittent ones. Uh, so I've got two effects. I've got the kill switch, and then I've got the uh, the the pickup selector. Uh, that's kind of a cool thing on Gibson, so we can go back and forth. All right, so let's just play a D chord, uh, a couple of noisy things, just to see what the guitar sounds like. <laughs> So, uh, let me just see what like a, one of my little, I have a little blues song I've written, blues rock tune. 
in 6-8 time and uh, let's see what that sounds like in standard because we're going to play it once I tune this baby down and see if it sounds as cool as I hope it will. something nastier and darker about tuning down way more gnarly way more evil and so I'm missing that and remember this guitar is all screwed up no mere mortal can play it only terrible guitar players like me and uh, I think the tuning down is gonna loosen this up a little bit make it more pliable put it that way okay so tuning down um, that's kind of tricky, you know, to understand, especially if you're not super theoried up, you know, which I am not. All right, so I've got one of these garbage snark tuners. Sorry, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but these things, every time I buy one, they break. I want to get like a serious strobe tuner that I'm like plug to on stage, like old school. We used to have one back in the day and beautiful, you know, the strobing effect and it's like big. These things, you know, they, I shouldn't bad mouth them because they're quite handy. Uh, they just break all the time and they look ridiculously stupid on your headstock, you know, just horrible, I hate it. All right, so, now, we're going to go E through E. What I always do, if I'm tuning down a concert guitar, is I'm going to start on the high E first, just so that there's less strain. I mean, that's just my weirdness. I've broken strings a lot by always being up on the low strings and changing tension so that the high side is having to hold all the tension down, you know, and this is all, all the tension's off on this side. This side has to take it on. More than likely, going back and forth from E flat to E, break string sooner if you don't start on the, if you don't start on the high side. You'll see what I mean. All right, so right here, I'm on an E, right? This little snark tuner is showing me an E. So I'm going to just back it off, back it off until it says D flat. And usually you want to tune up to a note. We'll do that later, but I'll just kind of tune up a little bit. D flat. The B string. I'm going to take that down to A flat. Let's see A flat come up. Now we're going to go to our G, which is the next string up, third string. And that's going to go down to F sharp. F sharp. Now we have our D, C sharp. And this is only a semitone, you know, it's like a one half semitone. And it's not a huge difference. And for some people, it really helps the vocalist, you know, to sing a little lower. I like to not worry about that so much. I don't like tuning down because it just always sounds weird. And I like to prove that I can sing the song if there's some cover or something. We want to do it in standard so that we can work our way up to that level. Even if it's hard to sing, we're not going to sing tuned down if we don't have to. I like it tuned down because it just sounds more evil and like more gnarly and I'm writing songs where I sing like that and I'm not trying to sing lower so it's only when you take a song and you drop it down to make it easier for your voice that you're trying to vo you know manage your vocals. For me I like to tune down and then write there. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not using it to get it lower I'm using it to make the guitar sound better and play better. Alright so where was I? D, D becomes a C sharp. I'm going to tune up to it. I'll have to retune again. Then our uh, A string becomes a B. I mean a D sharp. D 
this tuner sucks, our E becomes D sharp. The A becomes G sharp. C, I mean D becomes C sharp. G becomes F sharp. B becomes A sharp. The high E becomes D sharp. Reasonably in tune, let's try it again. Start back at the top. I have to kind of clear this tuner. Okay, get that D. That just sounded out of tune, that G string now an F sharp string. And if anything's gonna catch on a fret, it'll be this string. Now that it's tuned down and got more slack, it, that's the other thing is this neck goes like this, you know, it's like up here, really close to the frets, ski jump here. <laughs> it's a guitar that is only playable by its owner. Which I mean, that's usually the case, right? So I'm just making sure everything's in and I'm trying to tune up. Ugh. Okay, that's reasonably in tune. So you see why you want to dedicate instruments to this. You wouldn't want to do this live. Too much variance. Well, I guess if you had some kind of lockdown system, but boy, that'd probably be a pain. I've never messed with those, but. Oh, gee whiz, come on, tuner. Like you have to clear it each time or it has hangover from the last string. even say the right notes and it's like gee whiz okay let's hope for the best here on the tuning garbage all right so the idea is to play some of this kind of gnarly uh blue stuff on my flying v like i would a strat let's see if it works it does feel more manageable and it's closer to the fretboard Make sure it doesn't fret out. Okay, let's just hit a couple of A notes, make sure it's not fretting out. <laughs> that's reasonably in tune and it does feel easier to play right away so let's see what happens now I'm gonna do my little bluesy riff thing and see if I can get some satisfaction and a different feel than I do from the Strat so maybe Mark's playing the Strat and I picked this up on a couple of the songs that I'd ordinarily use a Strat for let's see if it works <laughs> Because with humbuckers, you just have more uh, more sound. It's harder to, to 
control the sound. Uh, on a Strat, you have music control. see what like a uh, little lead sound like and I will go to another pickup let's try one more little kind of uh, riff <laughs> killing me at home trying to go to that making those little transition moments let me try this one this is the harder one uh, let's see let's try this one on the neck pickup and let's do the little clapton woman tone thing just roll this off a little bit to grab this could throw you off um, but I like it better than the three knob cluster thing that triangle on the other ones uh, okay so let's roll this off Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so I think it does help. It does make this a little squigglier. It makes it more like my Strat. And uh, if I just keep practicing, I think that I'm going to be able to conquer this and use this guitar. Hopefully, it'll make me a better guitar player. And then no one will want to play this guitar ever because uh, it's basically unplayable except for the, um, the person who built it. But I do think this works. And I think that people that play Flying Vs uh, that want to get into this uh, would really, you know, dig it because I was looking it up and it just isn't something that seems to be discussed as much probably with Gibson people overall. Uh, I don't know how it feels feel in a Les Paul. I could picture it feeling really wiggly on my Les Paul. This isn't really a flying V because it's not, you know, really made correctly. Uh, so this one maybe reacts even better to it because it's so stiff so it just kind of brings it in and makes it feel more stratty. I did notice that I was having trouble executing on like on the um, the Stratocaster, I had this like, it's like uh, a lot of this, uh, oh, that's, uh, and I'm kind of, you know, blocking the strings and making like a Hendrixy kind of scrape that is way easier to do on a Strat. Here, you have to really control it. It sounded terrible. I could tell I'll be able to hear it when I play it back, but it wasn't very impressive playing right there. Not that any of my playing is particularly impressive, but that particular, that, I could feel the difference in execution and trying to execute that. But the wiggly feel, the better feel, the gnarlier, I think it does sound like nastier. And if you want to do like the Albert King thing, the full on Albert King or Jimmy thing, uh, tuning down just seems to, I know they must have tuned down uh, on theirs. I don't know, hopefully somebody out there knows because I'm not trying to give advice as much as I'm trying to share and find out what, are the, what other people think and do about some of these things. All right, so I've got to go back to practicing drum takes so that hopefully this, uh, in the next couple of days, I'll be able to get a drum take down, get past that song, and then start on, I've got uh, two more songs. I've got one more song that's not really done yet, but I've got a riff that uh, I think I want to try. It's a Jimi Hendrix ripoff riff, uh, but it, I think it could become a song watching something like that. song called Spy for Love. So I'm going to finish the tune, the tune I'm walking, working on, which is Hell Yes, and then I'm going to start working on probably Spy, uh, Spy, Spy for Love, and then the ninth song will be whatever this ends up being this. All right, we'll see what happens. All right. Thank you for endearing this, and hopefully, uh, if you're out there with a flying bee, and you have... Alright, so, camera cut off. Alright, so, uh, thank you for watching the video, and if you have any, you know, uh, input, if you have any experience uh, with Gibson guitars, flying bees, uh, specifically the flying bee, tuning it down, and uh, if you've had success, and what you feel about it, um, I think it's cool. And it kind of makes the V almost like for me like a, a, a yang to the yin of the Strat. It's like it has some Strat similarities, but it has that Gibson thing, you know, that gives it, I don't know, like the Neil Young sound that I love so much. And I love uh, Gibson's with the Deluxe. My Les Paul sounds incredible with this thing. Should have plugged this thing in. All right, but it's time to go. Next time.